Hi folks, what we want to do today is we're going to take and look at the uh, cardiac cycle. So we're going to start some cardiovascular physiology and we're going to look at how the cardiac cycle works. We're going to look at what's known as the Wiggers diagram and the Wiggers diagram is an example of showing pressures in the heart. It's an example of the cardiac cycle uh, but usually is shown a, in graphic form shown with pressures throughout the heart. And we're going to look at how the two of these compare and also look at how the valves function and how we can use that to figure out where we are in the cardiac cycle. Uh, so if we start here with our cardiac cycle, a um, couple pieces that we want to uh, define before we really get into it. Uh, number one, the first term is systole. Systole equals contraction. Diastole equals relaxation. E. There we go. Relax. Um, so contraction versus relaxation. So here we can see what we... Um, atrial systole means contraction of the atria. Atrial diastole means relaxation of the atria. Ventricular systole means contraction of the ventricles. And ventricular diastole means relaxation of the ventricles. So uh, just some basic words, all right, or language that we use here. So systole and diastole is what we're going to talk about. Um, so we said systole generally means contraction. Diastole means relaxation. Uh, a lot of times if you just hear systole or diastole, people are referring to what's happening within the ventricles. Uh, but as you can see here, there is atrial systole, atrial diastole, ventricular systole, ventricular diastole. So you really want to make sure to use the correct terminology, right? Use the full word atrial systole or ventricular systole uh, so that we can know exactly where we are. Um... <coughs> Excuse me. So this particular diagram has a starting our cardiac cycle right here. Um, some other books that we look at and uh, the graph that we're going to look at a little bit later starts actually right here. Now it doesn't matter where we start our cardiac cycles uh, specifically because it's a circle. We're going to go through each one of these steps, and it's going to happen over and over and over again. So uh, one book starting it here, another book starting it here is not a, uh, a huge worry. Um, the one thing when you start here, right, atrial contraction, we start with atrial systole. That, that's a good marker because it's something that you can see, right, the contraction of the atria. Uh, but what you do need to know or understand is what's happening right before it. Um, and right before our cardiac cycle starts up here, which is a great reason why the book, this book uh, starts it here, right, is that the ventriculars are going to start filling up at the end of their diastole, at the end of their relaxation period. So as we're going through this ventricular diastole, the ventricles are actually passively filling up about 80% of the way. We'll draw some blood filling up those ventricles, right? We're not filling all the way up at this point in time, but it's actually filling a good portion of the way, right? You can see blood's coming in through the vena cava, it's coming in through the pulmonary veins, and the AV valve is open. So blood's just, just able to come into here, pour straight down into the ventricles. If we start our cardiac cycle with atrial contraction, what the atrial contraction does is it fills the ventricles up the rest of the way. Okay, so now we're going to be as jam-packed as as jam-packed full of blood as we possibly could be. Right? But atrial contraction or atrial systole uh, is what fills them up the rest of the way. It doesn't fill it up completely, right, because most of that filling had happened back here, right, during the ventricular diastole period, uh, the filling portion of that diastole. So if we start with atrial contraction, we've filled the ventricles the, uh, as full as we're going to get. The atria then go into their relaxation period immediately after atrial systole begins ventricular systole. What happens in ventricular systole is that the ventricles will begin to contract and it causes the AV valves to close, right? Notice they're open here, they close. So AV valves close is a big thing. The AV valve, so both the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve close at this point in time. We're going to call this an isovolumic contraction. 
right? The heart is contracting, the ventricles are contracting, but the volume within the ventricles actually stays the same because the AV valves are closed, but our semilunar valves are also closed. As we continue to build pressure within our ventricles here, eventually the pressure in the ventricles gets higher than the pressure in the great vessels here in the uh, uh, aorta and the pulmonary artery. When the pressure in the ventricles gets higher than the pressure in the aorta or the pulmonary artery, the semilunar valves open. And we eject the blood out into the arteries. Once we've gone through our ejection phase, we then start to relax. Right? So end of our contraction, we then start to relax with atrial diastole, or excuse me, ventricular diastole. The atria are still in diastole as well, but the ventricles start to go through their diastolic phase. So they're going to relax. The semilunar valves close, the AV valves are still closed. So we call this an isovolumic relaxation. Okay? So the chambers relax, but the volume remains the same. Eventually, the pressure in the ventricles gets lower than the pressure in the atria. The AV valves open up, and we begin that passive filling of the ventricles where they're going to fill up about 80% of the way. Okay. So that takes us through our cardiac cycle. Let's take a look at it in graphic form as well. There we go. So we still have our picture of the cardiac cycle. Right, but now we're looking at pressures within the heart. And how does this particular graph okay, equate to this cardiac cycle here? Okay. So what we're doing is we're looking at three different lines. The red line is the pressure in the aorta. The green line is the pressure in the ventricle. And the yellow line is the pressure in the atria. Okay. If we were to start right here, that would be right here in our graph. Okay, so we're going to start with atrial contraction. Well, we know if the atria contract and we squeeze on the atria, the pressure in the atria is going to go up. And that's why we see this little blip in atrial pressure. We also see a slight blip in ventricular pressure. Well, sure, we're packing those ventricles full of blood. Right, so as we fill those ventricles, okay, the pressure in the ventricle is going to go up a little bit as well. We then get to this point here. Let's maybe label that in red. Draw this red line here. And we see AV valve closes, and we see right after that point a very sharp rise in pressure. That's going to equate to, oops, I drew that in the wrong place. That red line right there is where this red line is. Okay. the beginning of our isovolumic contraction. Right. With our isovolumic contraction, all four valves are closed, so we can see that the AV valves here are closed, the semilunar valves are still closed, and pressure goes up very, very quickly. All four valves are closed, so that's going to be our isovolumic contraction. We can then separate the isovolumic contraction from the ejection phase when our semilunar valves open. Maybe that wasn't the best color to use. And it would help if I could draw a straight line, but it gets the point across, right? When the semilunar valves open, we're at the ejection phase, the ventricular ejection phase. Right? So we're going to start to uh, push the blood out of the ventricles, right? The semilunar valves open, and as we still squeeze our ventricles, the pressure in the aorta increases as well, right? So here we're looking at the left side of the heart, obviously, but pressure from the, or blood from the left ventricle is going up and out the aorta. We're going to reach our maximum pressure here, which is about 120 millimeters of mercury. But that's our ejection phase. Let's see what color can I use next? Let's use Brown, maybe. We then have our semilunar valves close. Right? We're at the end of our ejection phase. 
we're at the end of our ejection phase, so the semilunar valves close, and we go through what's known as that isovolumic relaxation. Okay. All four valves are closed, the semilunar valves are closed, the AV valves are closed at this point. Okay. That isovolumic contraction ends... Oh, I'm out of colors. Here. Okay. When the AV valves open, and we start passively filling those ventricles again. So here's where the AV valves open up. It would help if I could draw a straight line. Those uh, AV valves open up, and then we begin our ventricular filling. And then we start our cardiac cycle again when the atria contract. So if we said this is section number one, two, three, four, and five. This would be number one. This small little area here is number two, right? The isovolumic contraction, very quick jump in pressure. Three would be ventricular ejection. Four would be the isovolumic relaxation. Five would be the ventricular filling again pass the ventricular filling, and then we come back to number one again. Okay. So you can see how uh, that ventricular pressure, uh, or our Wiggers diagram, talking about pressures within the left side of the heart, relates to our cardiac cycle here. Okay. And what we can see is that when the pressures change, right, when the pressures um, here, for example, we are atrial contraction, so we are right here or excuse me, ventricular contraction, so we're right here. This is where our AV valves close. Okay. The reason the valves close is because the pressure in the ventricles gets higher than the pressure in the atria. Right? So we can see our green line, the pressure in the ventricle, gets higher than the pressure in the atria. Right? The AV valve closes. The semilunar valve opens up when the pressure in the, in the ventricle gets higher than the pressure in the aorta. And that's when we start our ejection phase. Semilunar valves close when the pressure in the ventricle gets lower than the pressure in the aorta. Right? You can see here the blood's trying to push back and it closes that valve. Right? And then the AV valves open when the pressure in the ventricle gets lower than the pressure in the atria. Right? And blood drops down in and starts passively filling those ventricles.